to the webinar about rebel pools, um, the efficient and flexible solution for ribosomal RNA depletion in any species. Um, I'm Anna Lusner, the head of sales and marketing at Cytools Biotech. And yeah, thank you very much for joining everyone. I'm happy that so many people um, signed up and joined today. So before I wanted to talk about rebel pools, I wanted to give you a short overview uh, or introduction to who we are. Um, Cytools Biotech is a uh, company based in Munich and we were founded seven years ago out of a um, spin out of Intana Bioscience and the University of Regensburg. And we are a all scientists team and our core expertise is uh, oligonucleotide a reagent production and bioinformatics. Also, uh, as our founders are uh, experienced RNAi screeners, we have a strong foundation in RNAi. And our products include uh, um, a RNAi reagent, a RNA enrichment reagent, and our rebel pools for uh, ribosomal RNA depletion. And all of these products have one thing in common, which is that they're complex, uh, optimal designed oligonucleotide pools. We also offer services uh, around our RNA, RNAi expertise, um, which is mostly big data analysis of RNAi screens and RNA screens themselves, or we also offer uh, services around our NGS tool, the Rebel Pools, uh, which is RNA depletion in case you have any issues for optimization, or we can also do the RNA depletion for you. So as I have mentioned, our products have one thing in common, which is that they're highly complex um, oligonucleotide pools. And here I wanted to explain to you what I mean by uh, um, pools and uh, what the power of pooling is. So we discovered actually the power of pooling uh, with our RNAi reagent, uh, but the concept of pooling also applies to our other product products. And here on the left-hand side, you can see um, a single oligo that, that is um, supposed to um, uh, target this transcript in, uh, represented in green. And as uh, single oligos can only target a part of the transcript, you need a high concentration to have um, high efficiency and specificity. Um, and therefore, um, only high efficiency, sorry. And in, um, as you have to use high concentrations, you lower the specificity as high concentrations lead to unspecific binding of other targets. And this off-target effect or so-called off-target effect, we counter by pooling several oligos into a pool. And each of these oligos target um, a different part of the transcript or the target that is, or the transcript that is supposed to be targeted. And by, um, Doing this, we can also decrease the concentration, meaning by decreasing the concentration, we also decrease the off-target effect. Um, and this is how we um, ensure high target specificity and high, uh, high efficiency and reproducibility. And as I said, all our products have this in common that they're highly complex pool, uh, a pool of oligonucleotides. So that goes for our RNA interference um, reagent, the Cy pools, the Ra pools, the RNA enrichment reagent, and the Rebel pools uh, for ribosomal RNA depletion. Um, and before I talk more about the Rebel pools, I wanted to give you or um, tell you uh, how we actually started with the Rebel pools. And um, the story behind it, uh, it started with a quite unusual model organism, um, the planarian flatworm Schmidt T. Mediterranean. And Schmidt T. Mediterranea is a fascinating worm with incredible abilities to regenerate. And in fact, if you cut the worm into several pieces, each of these pieces will regenerate into a whole new viable worm. And in fact, if you cut it into 279 pieces, each of these 279 pieces will regenerate into a whole new worm. So this is quite fascinating. And this regenerative ability, these worms have because of their neoblasts. Neoblasts are um, a type of adult stem cells. And in these adult stem cells, in these neoblasts, there's a um, protein uh, expressed quite abundantly called the PV protein. And PV protein 
PV proteins in planarians are called SMEDV proteins. And if you knock down these SMEDV proteins, these planarian PV pr proteins, and cut the worm, these pieces of worms won't regenerate um, into uh, new worms. In fact, they will die 12 days or 21 days post feeding, meaning uh, after knockdown. And this phenomenon, or this, yeah, this phenomenon, a group uh, of the university in Beirut wanted to study. In fact, Jana Kim from the Kuhn Lab wanted to study this uh, on a transcriptional level to understand what happens after the knockdown of SMED V2 and 3 and why um, the worms cannot regenerate anymore. And as she wanted to study the transcriptome, she needed a tool to deplete the very abundant ribosomal RNA in the transcriptome to save costs. As you all know, 80 to 90 percent of the transcriptome is made out of ribosomal RNA. And in case you want to study the transcriptome, you either need to um, sequence very, very deeply, meaning uh, you have to pay a lot of money to have enough reads from um, uh, mRNAs or other non-coding RNAs that are not ribosomal RNAs. So what we did for Jana Kim and the Kuhn Lab, we designed a, a RNA depletion tool, which we then called the RiboPool, so she can study uh, the transcriptome before and after the knockdown of SMEDV2 and 3, um, um, yeah, cost efficiently. And this is what we also do for other species. And this is our workflow for the RiboPool. Um, it's a hybridization-based um, uh, tool. And as I said, the transcriptome is made of um, RNA and other RNAs. And as you want to deplete the RNAs, the DNA oligos, our rebel pool, um, are biotinylated. And these DNA oligos um, will then hybridize to the RNA. And as they are biotinylated, you can include uh, streptavidin coated magnetic beads. And as you know, biotin binds to streptavidin, and that way you can capture and remove ribosomal RNA and have a purified RNA ready for RNA sequencing. And all of this workflow takes around 70 minutes, so it's really fast and quite easy. Um, and here I wanted to show you what we currently are offering um, from our, uh, for our rebel pools. So this is the list of single species ribopools and ribosome profiling ribopools. In the next slide, I will uh, talk about the pan ribopools, uh, which are for multiple species. So here for single species ribopools, we have um, for eukaryotes and prokaryotes uh, already several uh, ready-made ribopools. For example, for mammals, we have the human ribopool, a mouse ribopool, or a chinchilla ribopool. For plants, we already have Arabidopsis thaliana and Oryza sativa. For fungi, we have three different rebel pools as ready-made rebel pools, which are Pichia pastoris, Zacharomyces cerevisiae, and Ostilago mydis. And for prokaryotes, we have, for example, Bacillus subtilis, or E. coli, or Salmonella enterica. And as I have mentioned, we also offer, uh, as the first company ever, um, RNA depletion tools for ribosome profiling. And currently in our portfolio, we have uh, uh, ribosome profiling rebel pools for human and mouse rat samples. As promised, here are the uh, pan rubber pools um, which can be used on a variety of species. So for example, here um, we have our customer's favorites, the, uh, the pan prokaryote rubber pool. And uh, scientists who study microbes um, use this for like metatranscriptomics or microbiome studies. And the PAMPRO has a wide spectrum of species from bacteria and archaea. It, target, it targets uh, 5S, 16S, and 23S rRNA. Um, and here are shown our latest members of the PAN rubber pools. Um, for example, here our PAN plant and our PAN memo. And the uh, plant community welcomed our PAN plant with great joy when we launched it a few months ago. And it's also very highly efficient which I will show later in a, with a few data. And it has broad coverage of flowering plants. It can be used on leaf, seed, and root tissue. And it doesn't only just target cytoplasmic RNA, but also mitochondrial and plastid RNA. 
And for scientists who uh, study, for example, um, environmental samples, you have the option to combine up to four rubber pools to deplete RNA from different non-related species. So you can combine, for example, the human rubber pool and the uh, pan prokaryote rubber pool in case you have, for example, also infected human tissue that you want to study the transcriptome of. And this enables a single step RNA depletion and reduces the loss of uh, RNA in case you would otherwise need to do a multiple step um, RNA depletion. And we also offer rebel pools for other abundant RNAs. For example, in case you work with blood samples, um, you can combine the human rebel pool with the human globin mRNA rebel pool. That way you can study the relevant part of the transcriptome without having a lot of reads wasted on globin mRNA. And moreover, I forgot to mention that, for example, our pan plant rubber pool also covers chloroplast RNA. So um, you won't have uh, high abundances of the chloroplast RNA in your libraries. And in case your species is not listed on the single species rubber pools or is not covered by any of the multiple species rubber pools, uh, you can contact us and we can design a custom rubber pool for you. Um, it only involves a one-time setup fee, and then you can purchase the rebel pools just as any other of our currently existing rebel pools. And here I wanted to show you um, the first kind of data, what we have from the Pan Pro rebel pool. Um, so this is the list of uh, species that uh, has uh, that we have uh, or that customers have tested the Pan Pro on, and have seen that the Pan Pro uh, works very well on them. And in fact, um, uh, our collaborator from the Max Planck Institute of Cologne, he has tested the PAM Pro on different plant bacteria and was really happy with the, the, with the depletion efficiency uh, in which he was able to show uh, that uh, the PAM uh, Pro depletes plant bacteria with 95% uh, efficiency. And here I wanted to show you um, how well the pan prokaryote rubber pool works on total RNA of E. coli. And what we did here is we used uh, one microgram of total RNA from E. coli with a high RIN value, meaning that the RNA was of high quality. And we also sequenced um, the libraries before depletion and after depletion. So before depletion, you can see that on, uh, only 10% of reads are not rRNA. And the remaining 90% reads mapped to ribosomal RNA. And for example, here in the darker orangey brown uh, bar, you can see that the most abundant um, kind of RNA is the 20, uh, 23S RNA from E. coli. And after using the pan prokaryote rubber pool on the E. coli total RNA, we, could, we can um, show you here that only 2.5 to 2.2% uh, percent of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNA, meaning that the pan pro efficiently depleted the rRNA of E. coli. And as promised, I'm also showing you here data from our pan plant rebel pool. Um, and um, this data was provided for us from Dr. Hüttel and Dr. Wöhle from the Max Planck Institute at Cologne. And what they did here is they used the pan plant on several species from different genera of flowering plants. And they used one microgram of RNA input of high quality RNA. Um, and as you can see yourself, between 4% and 9% of reads mapped to ribosomal RNA and the remaining ones uh, didn't map to ribosomal RNA, meaning that the PAN plant efficiently depleted rRNA in, for example, here the Arabidopsis tayana or Malus dominis, domestica. And uh, surprisingly, also, um, what Dr. Hüttel and Dr. Wöhle also did, they wanted to see how well the pan plant works on a very distantly related species, um, which is this primitive algae uh, called Chlamydomonas. And what they saw is that the rubber pool was able to deplete um, the RNA so efficiently that only 19.1% of reads were mapped to ribosomal RNA. So this is quite surprising, even to us, um, that the pan plant rubber pool 
which was designed to deplete rRNA in flowering plants, was also able to um, deplete rRNA in the primitive algae Chlamydomonas. And uh, what we want to show you here with, these, with this data is that you can use a single species rubber pool also for a mixture of um, species that are uh, related. So um, what our collaborators from the IGBMC in France did is they used a mixture of uh, total RNA from S. pombe and S. cerevisiae, which are two fungi. And they used 800 nanograms of uh, RNA input of high quality. And they used the rebel pool S. cerevisiae um, to deplete the RNA from S. pombe and S. cerevisiae. And as you see in all replicates, only around 1% of reads map to the ribosomal RNA of S. cerevisiae and between 5 and 8% of the uh, reads map to the ribosomal RNA of, of um, S. pombe. So this depletion was also very successful. And also um, we tested the pan mammal rebel pool uh, on mouse and human uh, samples. And our uh, pan mammal was able to deplete uh, very efficiently the ribosomal RNA from mouse samples, as you can see here. Before depletion, 92% um, of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNA of mice sam of the mice of mice. Um, and after depletion, only 2.8% uh, of the reads mapped to the ribosomal RNA. Moreover, we also tested the pan mammal on human samples. And as you can see, um, before depletion, 90% of the reads mapped to the ribosomal RNA and just 1.8% of reads mapped to the ribosomal RNA after depletion meaning that the pan mammal works really efficiently on high quality RNA. And we also wanted to test it on degraded RNA. And we saw, uh, we also sequenced the degraded RNA before depletion. And as you see, um, again, 10% 10, uh, 10 were non-RNA. And after depletion, uh, almost 30% of reads mapped to the ribosomal RNA, um, which is a okay depletion efficiency, uh, especially when considering uh, that it was degraded samples. Moreover, at that time, we were already developing a ribosome profiling rubber pool, and we wanted to see how well it would work on the, de uh, on the degraded samples. And you can see that 12.5% of the reads mapped to a ribosomal RNA, and after classificating the RNA, we saw that the, this contaminant were mainly 5.S RNA. Um, and that's why we then um, also included more probes, more oligos, uh, targeting the 5.S RNA in our next ribosome profiling um, rebel pool. And the take home message here is that you can use uh, our ribosome profiling rebel pool also on FFPE and degraded samples. And as promised, I'm also going to talk about ribosome profiling. And uh, as you see here, uh, I wanted to give you a short uh, introduction into ribosome profiling what, and what the scientists who do ribosome profiling are interested in is the ribosome protected reads, which are merely 30 uh, nucleotides long, as uh, they also use a RNAase to chop off uh, the other or, or the um, RNA that is not protected by the ribosome. And what we initially did is we just made a rebel pool covering for 100% the uh, um, uh, ribosomal RNA um, without any gaps. And um, I will show you in the next slide uh, how well this worked, but also then we saw that the um, contaminant pattern looks kind of like this, and that some, um, yeah, some 30 mers are extremely abundant, and some 30 mers from ribosome profiling are not as, ex 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 as, extremely, as extremely abundant. So that means that we had to adjust the um, coverage or the, the oligo ratio between um, um, yeah, those extremely abundant uh, contaminants and the less extremely abundant contaminants. And uh, Jonas Peters from MDC Berlin, he provided us with this data. So thank you, Jonas Peter. Um, and what he did is he used a custom ribosome profiling rebel pool protocol 
on 2.5 microgram of uh, RNA. And he used our initial uh, ribosome profiling rubber pool on this. And without depletion, he always saw that bet between 20 and 22 uh, percent of the reads he could use for his subsequent analysis. Um, and then when using our initial ribosome profiling rubber pool, he, he saw that he, could, he, he um, was able to deplete as many RNAs as uh, around 50%. Um, that means that he could use around 50% of the reads for his subsequent analysis, which is already a, a really good result. And what he also provided us with is this uh, correlation between replicates. And he saw that um, the rubber pool does not, um, does not uh, introduce any biases into the, um, into the library. So that's also really, really good. And um, our collaborator from Lausanne, David Gutfield and his group, they then used our optimized ribosome profiling rubber pool um, on one microgram of total RNA, and they used the ArtSeq ribosome profiling kit. And um, as they were using uh, the human ribosome profiling rubber pool on mouse samples, they also uh, got custom oligos for us to cover those uh, parts of the rRNA that is not um, conserved between human and mouse um, rRNA. Also, they uh, received custom oligos for us that cover the highly and extremely abundant contaminants of ribosomal RNA during ribosome profiling. And as you can see, what they saw is that only 24.7% of the reads map to ribosomal RNA, which is extremely good. And I don't think that anybody else uh, has ever um, was able to get this uh, good depletion efficiencies uh, when doing ribosome profiling. Just as a quick reminder of the power of pooling, I wanted to show you here how extreme the results are when you look at um, how well the 28S human uh, rRNA can be depleted with a highly complex pool compared to a low complex pool. And as you see here in the zoom, um, uh, oligos that like only one oligo depleting, supposed to deplete the 28S human rRNA, they um, are quite inefficient. And as you increase uh, the oligo pool, the effi efficiency increases. So this is why we pool our oligos. And to summarize everything, um, Cytools Biotech's uh, products are known for their highly complex pooling and that they're optimally designed. And this is how we ensure high specificity and efficiency. Um, and the benefits of rebel pools is that you can use them on any species or abundant RNA uh, you can get a custom rubber pool to deplete the RNA of your species and uh, that it's suitable for metatranscriptomics and it's highly efficient and specific. And we have a broad RNA input range between 100 nanogram and 3 microgram. And in case you have more total RNA or less total RNA, um, just contact us and we can help you find the best ratio for you. Moreover, the um, workflow is really fast and our rubber pools are HPLC purified. Um, and uh, the rubber pools can be used for any NGS platform. And our kit sizes are between 12, 24, and 96 reaction sizes. And you can also get a six reaction trial kit in case you try the rubber pool for the first time. Um, we ship our rubber pools at room temperature. And in case you don't want the full kit with buffers, bees, beads, and tubes, you can also get the probes and the Strip Davidin coded magnetic beads from us um, uh, outside of the kit. So thank you everyone for your attention. And in case you have any questions you want to discuss online, you can just write me an email at anna.lisner at sitools.de or you can just uh, email us with at the uh, email address info at sitools.de. And thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we have one question, if we can ship to Japan. And yes, uh, we can ship to Japan. We have a distributor there and I can set you up with him. Just email me uh, on info at and I can 
send you the contact. And um, is the RNA depletion efficiency decreased with lower starting RNA? Um, not necessarily. If you um, if if you have, for example, um, ten nanograms, you can just adjust the bead and probe uh, ratios, and then um, the depletion efficiency is just as if you put in one hundred nanograms or one microgram. Um, but you can just email me, and then um, we can discuss the ratios um, together.